Okay. Uh, we're live. I'm mm -hmm. going to do a quick uh, audio setup thing real quick. But uh, Katya, what was your question? My question? Okay. Hi. I just wanted to have like an icebreakery type of question. Like the first thing I was going to ask, I, for some reason I only see Eves. I didn't see Juhan or anyone else. But um, so what have you all been up to? Just like being indoors and under these these strange times. Um, what have you been doing? I've been reading a lot, um, which is good. I'm super bored here and it gets really lonely, but <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like being alone, I guess. Um, Music's kind of hard to make. I feel like everyone's feeling pressure to make music like during this time since they have so much like free time, but I'm taking it slow. I don't really want to force anything. Otherwise, I feel like I'm not going to be having fun. And if I'm not really having fun, I'm good. Nice. Yeah, I, I, that's actually yeah. Here, interesting to hear because I feel like, yeah, everyone is saying that like, oh, it's quarantine if you're a musician. You better be in the studio because this mm -hmm. is the time. But you don't have to be. Who cares? Yeah, you don't really have to be, and it's kind of hard to maybe click into that creative muscle if you're cooped up at home, not in your typical life, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah, that's a. I mean, that's pretty similar to what we've been doing. I guess we just Koch is literally in the room across from me. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we, what have we been doing, Katja? Just like hanging out. I guess your classes have started. So, yeah, everyone's in the Zoom meetings this week. Yeah. But like before classes start, I was also like reading books for fun, painting a little bit. Dope, dope. I'm just doing all these things for fun that I <laughs> would never be able to do. Mm -hmm. My like busy college life schedule. But thanks, I've been. <laughs> I've been exploring Danville, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. Danville. Danville, dude. I took her it's, to this it's cool spot. Out. What's yeah. Danville like? Uh, I mean, I can't really talk on uh, uh, social life because that is just old white people voting for Trump. But it's got some nice hills. It's got some nice mm -hmm. walks. It's, it's pretty, right? Yeah, I heard Dublin's it's a pretty place. Same. Okay, well, yeah, this is Juhan Kim and his friend Jackson's also in the background. Shout out to Jackson. Yep, uh, that's Jackson in the background. Hello. <laughs> I keep I keep him here as my pet. Yep. I chain him outside of my apartment every night. It gets really cold. <laughs> Reclaiming some power. Oh, it gets dude. really cold. Is this a I'm actually starving. Only fed me beer and nicotine for three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> for, for splitting up Korea, this is, this is what I'm doing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they split my country in two so i'm keeping him as a pet mm, 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 mm. it's totally totally jackson's fault for that one, so. all jackson's fault <laughs> <laughs> yeah i single-handedly did it actually <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> okay but yeah um no room no sweetener i mean like it's been a minute since we've really talked to you and what have you been up to how's the how's the grind you said you were potentially getting a phd in music. Oh, i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it i want to i want to teach music so i gotta i gotta be studying and you know take responsibility for my own actions and start like dedicating time and like putting in like work into what i want to do and like what i like doing as opposed to just like fucking off and complaining about it not working out mm -hmm. have you uh like what what's prompt is like because when we first met, you were an English major, so like, still am an English major. <laughs> no, I still am an English major. Uh, I'm doing a minor in music right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. I think I got like a. I remember back when you I, you called me when Elliot was here, and you, I got the impression that you were actually like dropping everything and like music is my passion. No, I, I want to go to school. <laughs> I mean, yeah, USF. You gotta go to school. You gotta make it happen. Trying, trying to get that education. Stay in school, kid. <laughs> Proceeds to smoke blunt. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, well, that's uh, probably a good idea. Do, do you th 
do you have aspirations for like an actual career in music? Do you want to tour and and visit like the world through music, or is it just sort of like study, teach? Um, what happens after that? Like, because I've always felt like you, if anyone I know, if you wanted to be a career musician, you could do it. Like, you've got the. What makes you say? What makes you say that? You. Because of dedication. I mean, we're playing League of Legends. Like, you got pissed, and I was like, if this is how you feel about music, no. it's over. It's over for everybody, dude. I don't, I don't know. know. It's always got that vibe. Because, like, sitting, you sort of started music later than a lot of like, our mm-hmm. friends, you know, like they've been playing instruments for a minute. And then. Yeah. And I, I guess I'm always going to remember, like, those videos that got on that guy's YouTube channel and they got like hell of views. Like, Damn, Juhan got two hundred k. Feeding the ego right now. Feeding the ego. Thank you, thank you. But then the reverse of that is like, has anyone like hit you up to like do a tour and stuff like that, or is it just still nah? On the... I'm not really trying to tour right now. Anyways, like it's just the writing. Yeah, I'm just trying to write some more, like, I don't know, I'm kind of viewing, like, everything I'm doing right now is just practice and, like, honing my craft, I guess, I don't know, I don't, like, like to take it too seriously, or, like, to take myself too seriously, rather, is probably a better way to put it. I'm just putting in the time, that's all I think about, like, once the quantity's in there, the quality will start showing itself. There you go. Which is that uh, from a book? What book? <laughs> Fucking Fanny and uh, Zooey or Zoe or whatever that JD Salinger book. It's about the prayer. Katya would know. I... <laughs> I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> Hell yeah! I support it from a distance as someone who hasn't read a book in a minute. But I would like to get back into that. But anyway, I don't want to talk about my lack of literary no. use. Um, I guess what this podcast is really about is like, so how have you been like doing the growth? How have you been uh, putting the work in? What's your sort of mentality and, and what are the, the day-to-day life? I'm trying to get the screen screen to work. Oh, okay. <laughs> the green screen's hard. The green screen's hard. Is it showing? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a Spartan's cap or something weird. Wait, let me try to check this out. You gonna... <laughs> Wait, no, it's not working. I can make myself invisible. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. What was the question? I was asking, uh, so the, the theme of this podcast is supposed to be how are you going to put the work in and like what's the day-to-day like growing Juhan like? How are you... Uh, getting yourself together in terms of music um what's the plan of action what's the plan of action um organization structure all that shit they don't have a lot of that i don't have a lot of organization or structure but um for me it's really just about like putting in the time like that's pretty much how everything works and like people forget that they think that once they write like five songs like they realize that they have no talent or if they spend like 50 hours playing guitar, they give up because they don't think they've like gotten anywhere or going to go anywhere. But like, Mm -hmm. that's such a minuscule amount of time. And like, you can't expect anything to come out of that. hundred percent. So I just practice. I just practice a lot. But you probably, you must practice like a certain type of way. What I've realized is like, there's like people that, get into like these like negative feedback loops even Mm -hmm. within their own practices because they don't look at it necessarily the most optimal way i i I for one like i'm trying to learn how to skate a little bit like i have Mm -hmm. an ollie almost yeah dope. but i've spent a long time on it and mostly it's just for exercise but if i get into like a nice like sort of like mentality as i go out onto my skateboard i'm not like overthinking it i'm not getting frustrated with like oh i'm not getting this fast enough i saw a video online some kid got this in two weeks like i 
I should have already learned how to ollie at this point. Like, what's wrong? Right. With me? Whenever I get into that headspace, it's just like immediately, I feel like oh, I'm I'm not good enough. I can't do this, and that's kind of been a uh, something I'm trying to work on myself is just like avoiding that negative headspace. You can't you can't compare yourself to others. Like, growth should just be like relative to yourself. Otherwise, it's not really like important. <laughs> exactly. 100%. Do you meditate? Do you do anything like that? Nah. I, I feel like I should. <laughs> I feel like I probably should start meditating. I've been doing a bit of yoga, which is pretty amazing. Hey. It's that good shit. Mm -hmm. Me and Katja do yoga sometimes. Katja, actually, fun fact, graduated from yoga school. Oh. Could teach yoga, which is so wild. Teach some yoga. What are you doing? I've, we, we, we might do a YouTube or like a Instagram video series. Um, I've, we filmed one thing, but it didn't turn out super great. So we might have to try again, but Katya, do you have anything to say on that? Are you still trying to, trying to do some YouTube? I'm still down. I like, um, the idea of like an Instagram series of just like short five minute kind of like you can wake up and do this sort of clips. I don't know. Just, just, for just fun. get into it. But I want to do it like, like to music that like people have made. Like you were talking about having one of your friends have just like a little like guitar thing playing in the background. You know, like mm. having like, playing it to like music like that. Oh yeah, we might have a buddy of mine like write yeah. a track because I think it's fun to get everybody like involved. Like collaboration just is the best. So like instead of like just like looking up some like free audio for this video Kachi might make we'll get like a friend of ours to write a track and then it's like you can do the the, the yoga routine to someone that you know who made the song and it just gives you even more motivation to to do a good job because you're like working together on that but uh yeah these are facts these are facts do you have writing collaborators or anybody that you like work with when you're trying to make music Juhan? Uh, in the beginning, absolutely fucking nobody. Um, <laughs> I started alone on day one. <laughs> yeah, we started alone on day one because I'm always super embarrassed about like whatever I write and like can't fucking show it to anybody like without shitting on it for like 15 minutes beforehand, which is a horrible habit. Um, but once I have a demo that I don't absolutely hate and want to burn, I bring it to dom you met dom he, yeah. he inside mood yeah i bring it to fuck i bring it to inside mood and they dom plays bass on the tracks now and we have a friend named colby who's also in the band now who plays saxophone and if i need any saxophone parts i'll hit him up and my friend marcos he he's been making music for a while and marcos hoy marcos hoy baby hey, yeah you I already was, know i already i put him on my website uh mm -hmm. check it out route <laughs> I created routed like, records. Routed records. Yeah, I created a fake yeah. label just to. It's a I fake label. It's not a real label. I shouldn't say that. It's a real label that has yet to do anything real, but we'll get there. I'm, I'm right. hoping that it'll become something. It's just a waiting game right now. Coronavirus has kind of cucked everything. Uh, and they're saying it might last for a good couple more months. I'm I'm a little freaked. I saw that Canada. Like their prime minister was that ah, god damn it. I didn't want to talk about coronavirus. But just to finish my tangent, like the end of July is when corona like shelter in place will stop in Canada. So I don't know what that means for the US, but if that's what they're doing in Canada, that might be we might be locked indoors for a minute. Yeah, it's gonna suck. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean like we have so much time and we have a completely new situation that like we have yet to make any actions on. Yeah. Um, so we can't really blame anyone for, for what we do during this time. And if you think about Which it, I feel like a lot of people want to do. What are you, you going to say? Oh, Nothing. Okay. I was just going to say. <laughs> Nothing um, important. Hey, well, excuse me. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, filling space because uh that just seems like the right thing to do but uh, i was just gonna say that 
Um, if you think about it, uh, we don't really need to worry that much about how long it is. Cause think of, think, I guess you can't compare, but I don't know. I just feel like a couple of months, four months, five months of our lives isn't like that big of a deal in the big scheme of things. I mean, all of us are pretty young people. And so if we have another 40 years minimum to go, like what's, what's three, four months of hanging out inside a house with a good way to look at it. Cause you could be, I mean, not to be lame, but like you could be in prison. Like that sounds like way worse than what we have going on. Like anybody complaining about coronavirus, like not to, the over the top but it's about saving lives like we're trying to avoid an absolute disaster here like it's not that deep i don't know i mean if you don't have to go outside just don't go outside it's not that great Mm -hmm. it's pretty simple (laughs) all right all right all right i'm done with my coronavirus tangent (laughs) yeah let's move on (laughs) let's get that out of the way uh we had to talk about it (laughs) elephant in the room honestly (laughs) historic historic element in the room um okay but yeah um do you have so who who so you have your uh dominic and then now you have a saxophonist is it just those two other people right now in 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 not adam adam's in the band too okay okay and marcos (laughs) adam from inside mood marcos isn't in the band but um it's me it's dom and adam who make up Inside Mood. Um, Adam plays like the keyboard and like an SP404, um, which is pretty dope. And then- Are we gonna turn off the sound on that phone notification? <laughs> <laughs> this is a professional stream, man. I just wanted to say that me and Marcos Hoy go out and skate all the time. Okay, oh. anyways, the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the- <laughs> Who else is in the band, shit? Um, there's somebody else. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> we know that's it. We had, well, we had a we had a viola player for the live session that we did with uh, Eli and Justin. Yeah, I think yeah, it's Eli, his name. Eli and Justin. Yeah, Eli and Justin. Yeah, we had a viola player for that. Yeah. Name's Indira. She's pretty dope. Yeah, I was a little bummed when I heard that uh, it wasn't going to come out in time. I think about would have been a cool thing to check out but i guess it takes a while to audio mix um so mm-hmm. it'll come out when it comes out i mean it takes time it will it will uh, also excited for that but uh yeah that are you like gonna do other stuff like that or what's what's no room no sweetener also okay i'm sorry this is this is actually a more pressing question where did the name come from Oh, no, no, you can't ask that. You can't ask that. That's confidential information. I'm sorry. It's redacted. It, it triggers me a little bit when I type in your name on Instagram and then like, it never fits into one line. It's always like the ER cuts off. Yep. And I'm like, yeah, I need to shorten it, to be honest. NS, no, NR, S. No, oh my God, my brain can't handle this. I'm sorry. I give up. I, I know it's like a four letter acronym, but. No room. No N R N S. Yeah. I Nerns. Do... Just say, that's the it's a quick way to say it. The only uh the only text on Instagram that it works with is the sparkly one or whatever. The the Yeah, the special effects. Yeah, the special effects. <laughs> oh I that was on purpose. Spamming. Is anyone, is anyone, oh, we have six viewers. That's awesome. Hey, hey, <laughs> what's popping? Party people in Does the building. Does anyone have an account? Can anyone like Ev- say everyone press, everyone press F in the chat. <laughs> press F. Everyone press F in the chat. I'm going to do a quick, uh, I'll just like spam Instagram even more. I'm going to live stream the live stream. Is that too much? Is that do whatever you want to eat? Because I did that last time and it, I was thought it was funny. But thank you. I'll I'll do my best to do whatever I want to do. Um, and, and starting off with that question, even if you're not going to tell us why it's no room, no sweetener, 
Can mm-hmm. we get a little backstory into how Juwan Kim became Juwan Kim as the musician versus Juwan Kim, the Magic the Gathering player, or Juwan Kim, the Minecrafter, or whatever you were doing before? <laughs> <laughs> well, Juwan Kim, the Minecrafter, was a, was a very promising future for me. Um, <laughs> and my career as a professional League of Legends player was um, mm. definitely cut short. Damn. <laughs> You were you were a diamond stuck. Uh... I was fucking stuck in diamond, bro. <laughs> all, all my teammates are so trash, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Well, you know Riley. Riley. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's a friend from high school. That or I guess I've known him since like elementary school. But um, we started hanging a lot, like out a lot in high school, and um, he wanted to start a band, but. I didn't know how to play anything, so he gave me this like drum machine. You know what I'm talking about, where you could like manually press the pads and play drums. Yeah. I was yeah, I was I was playing one of those for like a couple months, and eventually I picked up the guitar. And as soon as I knew like two chords, I was like, all right, let's write some fucking shitty, sad, teenage, angsty songs. <laughs> and it's still that. It, it's still that. Did you? Have no one put an F in the chat. Yeah, we have nine viewers now. We have more viewers, and yet no one put a no fucking F in the chat. I want some Fs in the chat. <laughs> Multiple people joined the Instagram live stream, and both of them are my friends who know that they should be watching it on Twitch. So, like, come on, guys, get it together, jeez. Jesus. Um, well, I'll type an F in the chat because if no one else is gonna do it, yes, give us the F. In chat. Now we're back to three viewers. Damn. I guess we scared them away. I guess they were uncomfortable by the F in the chat. I think that's. I think that's the Yeah. Uh, but okay, so you started with Riley giving you the drum machine, and then wanted to make sad boy music. Was there a of course influence for that, like an artist or? Like Eves, you already know this. You already know the answer to this question. <laughs> Current joints, bro. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Fucking Current joints. The first thing I got was a Luber pedal, and I thought I was so cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a it's a kind of a, like easier to make music sound. Uh, you, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You'll feel like you're doing something faster than if you tried to make jazz having spent right. no time but mm-hmm. oh shit my phone fell sorry sorry for the headphone users f in the chat <laughs> oh shit my friend maria said something hey maria how are you i'm sorry i should be focusing on the interview um that makes a lot of sense because we did like initially our friendship kind of started with just being like you like current joys i like current joys that is what happened. Let's make stumble mm-hmm. upon tapes, but in the Bay Area. Jesus Christ! Yes, that was, that was what I like. What a uni bay! Oh my God! Um, shout outs to to the historic other failed ventures of trying to do something with music and realizing it's not that easy. Hopefully, this goes a little bit better. I, Already, I've gotten a decent number of bands that want to do it. Thank you for reaching out so quickly, by the way. I appreciate you coming on. No problem. No problem. Hey. Um, (laughs) So, Current Joys was a big influence. Um, Yeah, not not as much anymore, but definitely at the beginning. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those, like, artists (laughs) that just you just get this, like, very angsty sense of from it but it ultimately i don't know it worked it, i don't listen to it either more or i don't listen to it anymore either but mm-hmm. um, but it slapped it slapped so hard it hit for the time and, yeah and no one can deny that and they sort of represented <laughs> like more than mac demarco because mac demarco is so big now and there's like a million different um kind of mac demarco clones i would say current joys is kind of like this own more like west coast sound that a lot of people wanted to emulate because it was easier to make that kind of music and it it really resonated with people but nowadays it feels like 
it, what had the same thing that happened with Mac DeMarco. There's a lot of people that make sort of current joysy music, but like, does it, how often do you hear a song and be like, okay, that sounds good in a certain like instrumental sense. Cause it's like, it's following a familiar pattern, but it doesn't really like, like I don't, I would never listen to it again. Cause there's a million other songs that sound like it. Like, kind of mm-hmm. Making a playlist today. And uh, I just felt like, like, Oh, that that sounds okay. I don't know. Like it just sounds like it's ripping off someone else. And um... you talking shit about the playlist? <laughs> That's fucked up, dude. She's in the call. No, not <laughs> specifically the playlist, but just like some some we were either, like working on it together, kind of. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, it got. Um, I just I don't know. I got that vibe of like there's just a lot of like the same samey same music. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, I haven't prepared to like call out anyone, so no one's no one's everyone's safe, I guess. Drop some names. No, drop, drop some names. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, I honestly would want to call someone out, but I can't. I do, it, do it. Do it. Do <sighs> it. Fuck. <laughs> start some no, beef. I don't need to start any beef. I honestly don't have. Like, okay. I have. If we're gonna like do it for the controversy, I have no hate towards like people like snail mail or small crush, um, mm-hmm. or uh, or I guess yeah, yes, but they're dope. They're dope. They're dope as shit, dude. I fuck with both of them heavy, to be honest. <laughs> Pristine was a great album, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that kind of sound has become really popular like the the, the snail mail style of music and I, I, it's this classic like derivative i i could talk about it forever it doesn't matter when music gets derivative or a sound i guess like it's popular it gets derivative it dies something else comes up it gets derivative it dies how are you gonna go about avoiding that is that something you're thinking about like do you really pay attention to any of the other like r&b music that you uh sort of sound similar to or is it just sort of juhan's in his bubble juhan's gonna make his kind of music and that's all that matters i'm not worrying about it sounding any like anybody else that's a good question um let me think about that take your time well yeah, there's definitely some people that like sound super similar to, but I don't think that's something I should really be thinking about. Like, if it ends up sounding like something, then like obviously I'm taking influence from it and mm-hmm. like I'm learning something from it. And um, checking the phone, yeah, <laughs> what's up, Jackson? Oh my God. <laughs> Jackson's locked out of my apartment. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, okay. We'll do a brief interlude. Brief, brief interlude. Play some elevator music. Okay. I'll just talk to Katya. How are you doing on the interview so far, Katya? How's it coming? How's it going? It's good. It's really interesting. It's like I feel like I'm watching like a YouTube video and I keep thinking I can pause it, but <laughs> you're in the YouTube video. What you're is a part like? of this been like watching like recorded lecture after recorded lecture and it's um i forget that this is live (laughs) (laughs) did did you have any thoughts you wanted to share katya anything that came up i did actually when you were talking about that playlist and um (laughs) (laughs) well i was just gonna say like you you eves told me before that a lot of this small artists who are just starting out tend to naturally sound like all the others because that's how they like get their foot on the ground and that's how they get their start they kind of have to sound a little bit like you know like the others who've made it big that makes sense yeah no uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right i don't think there's anything wrong with that because it's an easy way to get discovered you know it's it's sort of like uh um, like it's a classic in any art form you copy the greats and then i got the drugs oh my god (laughs) god the drugs on the stream (laughs) drugs on the stream those are not okay i'll put it away if you want 
Yep, I mean, do whatever you want, but it's just say it's cigarettes. It's cigarettes. We're smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a, a, a hand rolled cigarette. For sure, for sure. Yes. Uh, luckily, we're not famous enough for us to ever get reported or anything, so it doesn't matter. No one's My really bad. watching. Hopefully, hopefully, no one reports us. Please don't report. <laughs> That'd be kind of cruel. Um, and it's legal in the state of California, which everyone is in the state of California in this video. Um, just saying, Twitch. Dude, it was, it's so weird. They like make you fill out your card information like right there, like with the guys like sitting in the car. Jeez. Jackson is on FaceTime. <laughs> oh yeah. Say hi, Jackson is on FaceTime. Do you stream? <laughs> okay. All right, um, I'm sorry. We'll yeah. stop, stop being botherances. Oh, you want to go? No, you're good. Okay. Um. But you, you just tell about? me what you want me to do. This is your stream. I will respect it. I guess, um, Jackson, if you could, if you want to just be a little quiet and uh, chill in the back, that's totally fine. But there's only one conversation happening right now. That's Tell them how you feel. That's this conversation. We're trying to have a conversation. so, And I, I don't want to get interrupted. But Can't ultimately, it's not really <laughs> I remember what we were talking about. The sort yes. Of music. Artists all sounding the same. Yes. You start out sounding like the people that you want to sound like because you like their sound and it's easier to copy than to create something new. I mean, it's impossible to really be original in music anymore. But that being said, it does get a little tiresome of like hearing the same sort of, oh, you're doing that, but like worse. You know, like you're you're just copying Mac DeMarco. You're who you're just copying. Like, I I kind of like it bothers me when like a band that um, I personally, you know, don't think really like put all their energy into the the creative juices, but rather was just like, okay, I'm gonna create something that I know will find an audience because this is the hustle, and I I'm just trying to make money, which. <laughs> Ultimately, I can't really fall. Like, I guess I should just not listen to them and let them be themselves. But yeah, what's so hard about just being a genuine musician and doing what comes from you and not really uh, copying uh, other people's stuff? Just to, just to. I mean, ah, fuck. I sound like an asshole. I apologize. I reverse. I realize this just sounds like fuck anybody who who who's trying to make money. It should have mm -hmm. the art. Fuck the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but like it's okay. Who cares? Yeah. Ultimately, I guess it's just like music is a uh, ever evolving atmosphere, and and we're just gonna have to deal with whatever comes at us. Is is this a kind of a weird question? But uh, what annoys you the most about music? Or like what music annoys me the most about music? Or like performing. <laughs> Oh, like these are just examples because I realized it was a very big question. Yeah, um, that's a good question. That's a very good question. It's kind of hard for me to say what annoys me about music because I like it so much. But I'm sure there's um, some points where you get frustrated, right? Yeah, you get frustrated, but I mean, like, at least in terms of like learning music, like frustration just is like. What's a good way to put this? Like I guess I guess we're sort of um, our brains are just hardwired to like kind of be afraid of stuff that we don't understand, so that's why people get frustrated like when they're learning things is they just don't understand it and you want to like walk away from it, um, which you shouldn't do. <laughs> you got to break through that. Um, but music industry or like I guess shows there's a lot of really pretentious people playing in bands and I don't like them. They're always mean to me and they don't talk to me when I try to be <laughs> friends with them. They just kind of push me off to the side, but like, who cares then? <laughs> Nothing really gets on my nerves too much about music yeah, or like anything. Thick skin, I guess it's just like, no one's probably really out to get you. It's I just, say bye, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know what Jackson said. Um, 
no one's really out to get you. It's just uh, people's personalities. I mean, I, I would hope no one's out to get you. Do you feel like you've ever had a hater, Juhan? Has anyone ever a hater? Really like? I don't think I've had it. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have haters. I don't have haters. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have anyone trying to like come through my throat. Thankfully, <laughs> there's probably somebody like that I'm unaware of. But it's one of those Fuck things them. where, even though like, I feel like people will naturally haters is probably the wrong word. It's like there's probably people that don't necessarily like vibe with you but that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like you it's just like they're different than you and that and that, i know lots of people that feel that way about me the sort of like mm-hmm. you could you could go the astrology route and be like okay i'm a virgo oh, he's a scorpio <laughs> it's bad for that <laughs> maybe, maybe let's not smoke that whole thing right now yeah no definitely. oh my god that's it's a, a, that's a thick a tobacco deep deep oh the french wow accent. that's oh man the tobacco is really hidden this cigar is so Ooh. good <laughs> i'm loving the professionalism guys yeah you want that yo is there tobacco in this though there's no tobacco in this then i don't it's well, just I, weed and hash that's actually oh. what i'm about uh I'll be honest. I hate it when people don't tell oh, you shit. that there's it's a spliff right? and they pass you the spliff and you're like, <laughs> "That's fucked up." <laughs> Europeans. That's a fucked up thing to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I feel like everyone, everyone in Europe just assumes it's a spliff. Yeah, yeah, because like the weed's a lot more rare there, so they always spliff it, which I have to respect. But I don't, so I guess I don't have to. Fuck it. If you guys need your tobacco, you need your tobacco, but move to Amsterdam. They have dispensaries. Come on. European Union. Okay, this is a dumb tangent. We were talking about music, obviously, but we were specifically talking about what annoys you about music, and you were making a very insightful point about how people often do get frustrated, and that's what kind of prevents them from really figuring things out is like that sort of like angstiness or that sort of fear of failure Um, Mm -hmm. do you have any like moments where like you were really afraid of of failure you were like having a struggling with that sort of frustration that and and how did you how did you deal with it Uh, um well that's a pretty common thought for me. I feel like a lot of the time, uh, like maybe every every couple of weeks or so, I'm like, I shouldn't be making music. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, it's a, it's a pretty like surface level thought in that if I go like one layer deeper, like I can't really imagine myself not playing music. So it's not really a thought that bothers me too much anymore. But I think it's a thought a lot of people have. Um, yeah yeah well where do you think that thought stems from like what what causes you to go like oh, i shouldn't be doing music what do you do you know what it is or... dude i just get frustrated like all the time <laughs> which is why i think about the idea of frustration a lot mm. because i get frustrated a lot like but i've learned to like chill out is that usually with like writing like you feel like you, you can't find the right pieces for the puzzle or or, or... yeah that sounds about right because i i think i've i've felt that myself i mean you said you we talked earlier while playing legal legends i feel like i should just put it out there yeah bring it back to there was a pre-interview to this interview we played a ranked game of League of Legends together. We fucking lost, lost. when we shouldn't have. We should have taken that duh. It was low-key my... Well, I don't want to take the blame. It <laughs> it's not your fault. fault. It, was it wasn't not your fault. fault. It was no Dude, your AD fault. carry sucked dick, yeah. bro. <laughs> nothing wrong with sucking dick, but... There's nothing wrong with sucking dick. But not while you're playing League yeah, of Legends. Come on. focus on the game. No, I'm kidding. Focus on the game. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, but uh, yeah, we were uh, playing league and and 
I had a separate question about that, but I'll try to avoid it um, till later. Frustration. Yes. <laughs> you, you get it a lot. And I sure think do. that's a pretty normal thing. But how do you get out of it? What's What's been the trick to, to getting back on your feet, getting grounded? Um sometimes you just have to walk away from it for a second like you don't need to do everything like at the exact moment that you want to like you can rearrange stuff like based on at least like, like how i view it is like there's always these like certain moods i get into and like, during these certain moods i can't do certain things like some of them i can't practice like some of them i can't write so i just kind of <laughs> just re- rearrange my day so that they all match up and i could do everything i need to if that makes any sense yeah definitely that actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, when you do hit like that wall, it makes do something else. Yeah. Do something else. Refresh (laughs) your your intuition. Cause it's so easy to get like, you can't force it. You just, you can't force creativity. And so it needs to be charged and needs to, to escape. Is is skateboarding like a a big thing for you in terms of recharging creativity or what's your big way to recharge? skateboarding definitely a little bit i mean i mean i don't really skate too much like i'm not any good but i guess i just saw on your instagram more recently that you were skating but i don't know i have been skating i have been skating i live in san francisco so i kind of need to it's like an (laughs) obligation um it's crazy how big it is these days i i I forget yeah i I have a skateboard that's pretty mm -hmm. well it, it gets all my physical frustration out or like my frustration out like physically I just tire the fuck out of my body and then I have no more room for anger in it. Feel okay. That, that's something yeah. my dad always would tell me. He'd be like, anytime I was like having a lot of stress or I was freaking out, I'd, I'd go for a run and you just get the mm-hmm. endorphin rush. And it sort of yes. releases a lot of that stress. Katja, did you, did you have anything you wanted to say, by the way? Yeah. Um- I was zoning out because <laughs> sorry, I was on Spotify. I have a song stuck in my head, mm-hmm. and I don't know what the song is. So I've just been looking through all my liked songs. Mm. And I what really went. It. I don't know. I'm not gonna sing it to you because I don't sing. Sing oh. it, sing yeah. it, sing it. We'll help you find it. Thank you. I just I wish I could Shazam whatever's like in my head right now. That, that I talking about another music give it a thing. few years <laughs> when are we gonna install shazam into our head dude facts dude i've been waiting <laughs> just anytime you literally like well that'd be annoying when you like were walking in public and like you're at the bar and like your brain is just like now listening to uh fucking r kelly's uh, <laughs> The remix ignition or whatever yes <laughs> like, mm-hmm. i uh i thought we fucking canceled that motherfucker what the fuck guys god now my brain wants to bring up that tiger show that everyone's been watching on netflix but i don't even know what it's about i don't know what it's about either i saw like a mug shot maybe it's like some true crime shit i don't know i think it is yeah it's like making a murder but florida so what's making a murder another net like netflix documentary <laughs> That was like about some guy who was falsely accused of crime, but ultimately I don't know what. But anyway, I don't want to talk. Oh my god, I need to get better at this. Music. Just gonna keep saying music. music. You can, there should be a music. counter for every time I say the word. Music. The word music comes up. <laughs> <laughs> the screen flashes. Hey, Keenan's in the chat. What's good, Keenan? Um, you didn't press that. He didn't press F. If you p- would please press F. Please. Uh, but other other ways you recharge, other ways you uh, deal with that frustration after dealing with a tough time in the stew. I just go to sleep. I just go to sleep. That's all I need to do. I wake up and I feel I feel nice and clean and smooth. Mm. And I'm ready to go again. Do you do you have a schedule? Is there a sleep schedule, Juhan, or is it just? To- until you pass out not at the moment but most of the time like when i'm in school i have an hour by hour schedule that i follow that i have 
everything I need to do on, including eating meals, wow. which has been really important for me. Is it a spreadsheet or how'd you do it? I just write it in my notes, like behind, like I have a list of everything I need to do for every day. And then right beneath that list is an hour by hour schedule of how I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy, but no, I've tried to do that, and uh, I wish I could do it. Um, I've just lacked the inconsist, or I was too inconsistent. I was trying with a like, Google um, sp- sh- Sheets, Google Excel spreadsheets. Just like <laughs> every day, I have like a little schedule, and I did I do this today? One. Did I do this today? Zero. Like smoke weed or drink alcohol or whatever it was. Like I was trying to keep track, but I guess that's not exactly what you're talking about. You're talking like you've chunked out your day and you're do you stick to yeah. it or does it often get messed up i'd say like six out of seven of the days of the week i stick to it wow. and then one day of the week i'll have to rearrange and how much of that time typically goes to your creative aspirations with music uh, uh two hours a day on spending recording or like trying to record something or learning about recording and production and like songwriting and stuff. And then at the time it was another two hours of practicing guitar. (laughs) So four hours a day into music, which I, I mean, that's a good amount. (laughs) I would say that's like putting you leagues ahead of a lot of people. So I got um, catching up to do. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, it's still a very difficult thing to break into music, but um, in my artist management class, we've been talking about like the sort of like way to like look at it. And I, I've been imagining it in a very like number sense. And it's like music in terms of like having a career. It's like there's probably a hundred thousand people in the world trying to make money on, on music, like actively, like they're like putting some sort of effort. And then there's like maybe 5,000 people at the very most that are like producing music that are actually like making enough money to just do that Mm -hmm. and so it's about like finding a way to make whatever you're doing like special or or the best of whatever it is so that you break in to get to the table or get to the party and you don't have to be the number one person you just have to make it to this like level where like that's that's the skill level it takes to to make money in in the industry for whatever specific career your thing is because i don't think people would really take the time to really consider like you can't it's not just about like making a hit song you know you can't like or like it's not like one little thing it's it's really about being the very best at one skill that is very useful and will consistently make you money to say like if you're uh in the studio and you're a producer like being a very very good producer and having like a specific style that makes you noteworthy and special so that you make the records that make money and and people keep wanting to work with you you have to be unique you know and like be unique in a way that is like worth looking into versus like a gimmick or something but is that something that you you consider like trying to to develop yourself as like a sort of um like <laughs> i'm gonna be the very best or i'm gonna be really 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 good at a specific thing in music and that's sort of an aim a goal to aim for and you'll just make it no matter what because you're the best at this thing or what are you no your perspective <laughs> i don't i don't like viewing it that financially it's not fun <laughs> that way <laughs> <laughs> that's the business unfortunately the business side of things is yeah you know that's more, like i like like that like that's fun to me it's like oh if i'm just like really 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 good at like getting people to like 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 if i was like the very best booker you know i could have a career just booking shows you know? right but what even constitutes that what do you mean constitutes that? like like as in like what being like the best like the best book uh, you uh have like a i guess a i mean that's that's a beautiful question that i i would love to write an essay about <laughs> but i would uh-huh. imagine just off the top of my dome what it would take is you know being someone that a has a lot of connections but knows how to talk to people in a way that communicates really really efficiently i mean you're you're trying to just 
say exactly what you need to say to the people you need to say it to at the right time um, as fast as you can so that like things can happen because it's such a the thing with booking is it seems to be all about just um, planning ahead like being ready for okay the calendar dates for these uh, shows are or the calendar for this venue is such and such and I want my band to play there I have to start thinking about okay do they have availability on this night and like how do I convince them that I guess this is more manager than booker because that's what I'm interested I'm not trying to be a venue booker that's like the other side of the story but um should should I keep ranting about this but yeah uh it's just figuring out uh, a schedule for your band to develop its tour so that you can get all the shows booked in time before you go on mm-hmm. tour to make sure that like people show up and also yeah like that's another part of it is promotion and everything but um to be the best manager that's something i'm really trying to figure out i don't even know exactly what it is yet but the goal It'll is to, sort of to you yeah it's exciting i mean there's a lot of facets to it it might seem very businessy but i still think there's a lot of creativity when it comes into like being a nobody to to finding a way to like have some influence or have some sort of like way to work with the sort of obtuse system that we have in in music Mm -hmm. and it's like super undervalued work like no one really thinks about it it's kind of behind the scenes stuff that people forget about but like that's what's holding it all together yeah all the people in the in the in the behind the scenes, dude. It's like the behind director. the scenes. I don't want to call yeah. it like the director too much, but you know, someone who's maybe a producer makes more sense. Yeah, like a movie producer or something, and someone that gets everything to get together. Because to me, the artist's role is to make the best damn music that they can make. That like is amazing, and I want to hear it because I love listening to music. But there's so much of it, so it's like very difficult to really like um making uh make music that like is worth repetitive listens if that makes sense it's like you can hear a lot of songs and they won't bother you but what makes you come back to a song you know which is a great question juhan what is also a great question what what can you think <laughs> one that i don't have the answers to yeah, right it's a tough it's a very tough uh I would say that uh, having listened to your discography a decent amount, there are certain songs that I think follow the the sort of style or structure that lends itself to wanting to be listened to before over and over. It sort of, so, sort of, sort of that's good to know. <laughs> Obviously, you're still in your development phase to a degree, but um, it, it, there there is a sort of innate understanding that I think you have that is... Uh, gonna do you well in the future when you, you make more moves so to speak thank you thank you thank you thank you of course i i i've always would like talk you up be like yo juhan's super impressive super impressive but ultimately oh, that's cute at the same time i mean like you're like anyone else you still gotta put more work in you still gotta and we all do you know it, it's not over yet this is just the beginning i mean in my class we've been talking like most people's plans are at least five years, you know, mm-hmm. from start just to like get to the table, just to start like releasing an album that makes like a hundred thousand dollars or something. It's like you have to spend a lot of time. It's a yeah. process, yeah, <laughs> to make a hundred thousand dollars. How many Spotify streams is that? Probably uh, a lot. It's probably what we get paid like. What's a thousand or hundred hundred divided by seven? <laughs> That's a good question, but I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, I think it's something around fifteen. So it'd be fifteen million plays, I would imagine. Something like that. That's a lot of plays to make a little amount of money. Isn't that sad? Or I guess a hundred. Yeah. Because like you got to split it with the band. Yeah, yeah, and you have producer, to split it with the label. Yeah. And there's You're no... gonna end up with like two thousand dollars. That's where. Most money seems to be made in merchandising and mm-hmm, tours, touring, merch. Like, like that's one of the funny things that my teacher talked about. It's like, they're not a band. 
they're a t-shirt vendor <laughs> like like there's <laughs> artists that just got really really good at like getting people to buy their merch like their music's mm-hmm. fine but like that's not what makes them money it's the it's their ability to sell designs and sell t-shirts and make people want to you know contribute that fund or that money to them do you do you have you been thinking about uh the sort of plan ah man i forgot i had a really good question i forgot it fuck Ah, now i have to move on really quickly (laughs) um do you do you think about um like oh yeah that was it do you do you want a record label or do you, are you interested in that like what's your situation the whole like labels and managers and publicists and publishing companies oh, oh. i just want to be with my homies i just want to be in a group with my homies that's it so like just working with 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 the squad with my friends yeah working with my friends I'm and people that way. are gonna like people that are better than me hopefully ideally so i can learn from them but that's it like it's 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 not a big thought for me i don't also i shouldn't even be worrying about that like right now like yeah, no, you don't need to worry about it. i was just kind of curious because there's a lot like when you do get to the table you should sort of have an understanding of like okay this is what i'm gonna do like that's a big thing we've been talking about too is like uh again i know this isn't maybe your favorite subject but it seems sort of relevant to the to the show um when you do start to make money, knowing how to use your money and knowing how to um, kind of continue the sort of uh, the game, because a lot of people, not a lot, but like I guess a decent amount of artists might get some sort of popularity or get some fame, but then when they reach that level, it's like, what do I do now? You know, like I wasn't expecting this, I wasn't ready for it. And so they squander their opportunity. In, in, right. in the industry because it's very it's very like fast like that like you can people fuck up their careers all the time <laughs> and we never find out about their stories <laughs> <laughs> that or like, you watch it happen live do you remember britney spears <laughs> <laughs> yes i do remember britney spears that was such a crazy oh my god i mean i think she's probably ultimately fine she wasn't according to my teacher she wasn't really like a musician she was picked for her look and then they taught her like people like it was sort of like she was plopped up by like an agency or a label or something they like found her and were like we're gonna make you into a musician star and they did but like she wasn't actually trying to be a like that wasn't her initial goal or anything like that. <laughs> have you heard the conspiracy that her voice is pitched up in all the songs like it's all like it's not all like her. like that's not her actual singing voice, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, based on the fact that like, she wasn't <laughs> interested in trying to be a, a, a musician to make her a singer. I didn't know that. She's yeah, well, dope, though. I fuck with her. It, the music doesn't lie. I mean, the music toxic, doesn't lie. <laughs> toxic. Banger, bangers. That being said, who? How much of the writing was really Britney, and how much of you know? Because in a sort of classical sense if she wasn't really a musician most likely it was the producers that were putting all that shit together and then making it into something which we often i feel like forget about i mean a lot of the art comes from a lot of people in behind the scenes too not just the the person with the name on spotify mm-hmm. yes do you do you ever think about working with like producers or anything like that i guess not right um, now well yeah, no, not right like now. But I mean, I had Marcos. Marcos produced a song for me. He like made this like beat, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll hop on this. Like, it wasn't really like a big thought process. I was just like, I like this. This is my friend. Like, I'm gonna sing on this because <laughs> it feels right. <laughs> and that was like all there is to it. But I definitely need to be in the production process. Otherwise, I feel kind of like stripped yeah of what i feel yeah. more comfortable with because it's not it's not my voice that i feel comfortable with it's like everything else mm-hmm. which even then isn't very it's not very comfortable it's still super uncomfortable but... you're still working on it mm-hmm. and don't be so hard on yourself i feel like <laughs> yeah, it's bad you, i've always been so so hard on yourself which um you know i don't personally i don't have an issue with 
like it doesn't put me off but it might like people might be like oh this guy because how i think someone could interpret it is like if juhan's always putting himself down then um it's like a like you're not really like giving yourself any credit which then almost looks like it's pretentious in a weird way it's like you know like i might think you're doing something really good and then you're like this thing sucks it's like oh you know (laughs) (laughs) you know yeah Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be i guess you know you're obviously you're still learning and still growing and everything but just be aware that like maybe it's not a good thing yeah it has an effect (laughs) they're intrusive thoughts hey it's okay. We're all, Thank you. We Thank all you. should be seeing therapists. Katya's seeing a therapist. Shout out to Katya. Is that so... okay? I was okay to... Yeah, that's fine. I feel like in 2020, we should all be cool with saying we see therapists. Like, I tried to see one, and uh, they didn't want to take my insurance. So I kind of Damn. stopped. Uh, that sucks. But yeah, I mean, we'll get there. I think when I get a job again, I'll put some money in. There's some cool, there's some cool affordable stuff. I mean, if you're willing to look around, shop around, you can find, like, I know. Uh, oh, shit. I really can't be going this, down this front. This is not... Going to Tiger. Yeah. Yes. So good looking. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Such a good looking man. If, you, if you're struggling, anyone watching this, if you're struggling, if you need help, there are resources. Everyone deserves to talk to someone, and um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're human being. Like, what the fuck is being a human being? It's so strange, so strange. So, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with you. Just uh, don't give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> Again, um, still learning myself. I like to do interviews, but uh, doing it all off the cuff, it, it's, it's it takes a certain muscle. Um, okay, don't worry. Do we want to? <laughs> uh, yeah, you got anything else? I think that's we've done a lot. Honestly, I I'm pretty happy with what we talked about. It seemed like some good stuff for the dope, dope, dope. for the channel um mm-hmm. is there anything you wanted to promote anything you've got coming up i know of quarantine most likely just yeah shout out coral nine go listen to them yes. shout out inside mood go listen to them uh go listen to all of marcos hoy's production um listen to Levera. listen to solar child um listen to the paper girl <laughs> yeah oh, yeah I'll, <laughs> those I'll, are my promotions that. We'll clip that and we'll put it on the gram. Listen to more music that's local, or not, I guess you shouldn't, fuck, not local. It's just not, um, s- uh, still growing. Still oh, up. listen to Urban Nation. Mm. Listen to Urban Nation. Bianca got her up the homie. I think the, the final question is okay, I'm going to give you five venues or how many venues I can come up with, and I want you to rank them best to worst. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. I don't even know if you played the Gilman, but the Gilman. Okay. Uh, Honey Hive, Bottom of the Hill, Cafe de Nord, um, and oh, wow, I don't think you played Oakland Secret. Uh, what's the goal? Is it Golden Bull? Have you done Golden? Uh, Bull? No, I don't know where that uh, is. Okay. Um, then I will say the Milk Bar. The milk bar. Okay, the milk bar is on the bottom because they're 21 plus and I can't play there. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Uh, number four. Bottom of the hill. I don't like how far away it is from everything. But it's cool. I like bottom of the hill. Man, these are like all my favorite venues too. What venues Fuck. don't you like then? I just I feel like brick and mortar or uh oh, brick and, well is brick and mortar under new ownership rickshaw is cool bro i played there uh in high sun in the green room they just have a vending machine with gear dude it's so amazing <laughs> it felt magical oh shit that's that's pretty tight the cafe du nord's number one because their sound guy is fucking dope oh and honey hive number two because they let anyone play there which is amazing and then number three is Gilman. 
Have you played Gilman, or you just you just don't know Gilman, right? Um, I've been there a couple times to see some shows. I got asked to play a show there, but I said no because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to play a show. Um, I think that's probably one of my favorite things about you, John. You seem much more selective than other people in terms of what you're willing to do. I I feel bad because I think about that one time. I like inv- I heard like the two times I invited you to play like bad shows or like you well, know bad shows showed up. Oh. Do you remember that uh, I remember Ivy that. Oh my god, that was horrible, dude. Played to a 45-year-old trucker man who said I sounded like fucking Elliot Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I made like four dollars. They paid? So like yeah, they paid me four dollars. When did they pay you? Like as you left? <laughs> they vended me. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, they mad <mad-mode> about me. <laughs> That's so funny. Wow. Well. Okay. Cool. Every show, um, every experience. All right. Well, thank you, Juhan. Thank you, No Room, No Sweet. No problem. Um, no problem. No problem. You can find them on Spotify, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't. Not Snapchat. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Uh, Apple Music. Are you on Apple? I think so. I think I'm on Apple Music. A bunch of our friends have Apple Music profiles, but they're like not properly set up. So another band is also on them, and I've like noticed that. Like Coral yeah, Nine it's pretty lame. Them. That should have. Oh, Coral Nine has that happening to them. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm gonna help figure that out. But anyways. Yep. Nice talking to you. you so nice meeting you, Katya. Nice meeting you. Yeah. If, any um, final remarks, Katya? No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. You're fine. All right. I'm going to play some League of Legends now. <gasps> hey. All right. Take care, Juhan. All right. Thank you all for watching episode two. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. I I can't even. You can't even see me. Now you can. Uh, goodbye.